Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're playing with guts. Aw, oh, gross! Well, the kind of guts you'd find inside of a gunk. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is picking up where we left off the last time we got Regonculus. Because let's face it, we've been about as productive with the gonk build lately as a Gamorrean trying to score dates on Tinder. Anyway, today's build has a ton of different things that we need to get to, so let's get started. So with any gonk build made from containers, structure and stability is a consideration that has to be made. And this gonk is no different. I need a solid infrastructure to support not just the gonk, but all the ridiculous innards we want, as well as a simple way to attach the legs and the feet. So PVC pipe seemed the perfect solution for me. concept was to use the PVC not to only provide the attachment for the legs, but also a platform for the base on the inside of the gunk. I went back and forth on how the inside would be visible and finally decided that the top portion would give me plenty of room. So now all I need to do is create the platform for the base. lids, not just for greeblification. Now, the Tower O Power that I chose for the gonk is obviously the centerpiece. So I figured out where I wanted to position it and then set to work in Adobe Illustrator to design all the levels for the inside. I wanted to use the laser cutter for this so I could have very specific cuts and details inside the gonk. This gave me the ability to create exact locations for mounting points and perfectly sized openings, as well as all of these great details. detail I went through my model kit parts and found several silver parts that were actually gifted to us this year by the Collins family in Lubbock. Thank you guys, these were the perfect pieces for the inside of the gong.
Now, we talked about the batteries and whether we would put those inside the gunk to provide power, just like they do in the films. Someday we might, and I have plenty of room in the bottom to do so. But for now, I wanted to install one of these AC rocker switches. This will allow us to plug in wherever power is provided and give power to whoever needs it. I will say the wiring for this little guy was a bit confusing to figure out. There was not a wiring diagram provided with the part, and the online resources were about as helpful as a one-armed droid in a cantina square dance competition. Needless to say, my wiring worked out, and so far, I haven't burned down the shop. So that's a plus. Confession time. This was the last bit of work done on the gunk for a really long while. And I know Lefty was starting to get a bit concerned, seeing as the gunk sat pretty sad against the garage door. Lefty does a really good job around here of letting me know when it's time to get back to work on a neglected project. So we picked up the sad little gunk and got ready for another round of marathon building. Now I'll say that Lefty isn't the only one that keeps us on track around here. Our growing, amazing Patreon community has become the key to growing the Smuggler's Room. You all keep us inspired, energized, and always excited for the next project. We are just so appreciative of each and every one of you. So truly, thank you for your contribution and for helping to build an awesome community. So what do you work on when you've taken a month away from a project? Well, how about the most difficult thing? For me, that has been trying to get this gunk to open and close. Okay, so we have to pause for a moment so that I can talk to you about the structure I've been building here for these arms to raise and lower the lid. It's been a little complicated to figure out, and so I've done quite a bit of this without really recording it. I had to get my head in the right space. When you're creating something like this, kind of without a plan, I find myself just needing to just dive in and try a bunch of things that are probably not gonna work. I bought a whole arrangement of different hinges and things like that, thinking I could hinge the back of the lid. But the lid itself has this big lip with the styrene, so it can't hinge normally, which means we're gonna have to do this a little differently. Also, this inside plate that I've got as the base for everything else to sit on above it was perfect and there wasn't a space for the arms 
to sit down inside. So I had to cut and modify that. It was a simple enough cut on the bandsaw, just measured, cut it, and done. Also, these plates here, the plate itself, you can see from this side, it's huge. And so that means everything inside, this is gonna get in the way and I need to cut that down. The great part of that is, as you see here, I can cut it on the bandsaw. It's aluminum. I, I love to work with aluminum or aluminum, whichever way you prefer it, um, because I can use my wood tools on it and I can cut it. It's soft. Uh, I still get plenty of rigidity, but it's soft enough to shape with files and sanding and, and so on. So anyway, wanted to just take a second to kind of clue you in that right now what we're trying to work on are the mechanics of this opening not falling off and uh, being able to access and see the inside of the gunk. And it has been um, challenging to say the least to try to make this work the way I want it to present at the end of the day. So we forge on to get this done. <laughs> These hook and eye turnbuckles became my go-to solution for the rear of the gonk lid. I just pulled the hook end off of each one and swapped it with another eye to make it work. Then I could mount them in the rear of the gonk as you will see. These work great as they are adjustable so I could fix the tension one way or another to make for a perfect fit. They're far enough back on the inside that they're pretty much hidden away. <laughs> that was just crazy enough to work. The use of the standoff brackets to hold all the levels together is key. I wanted the assembly of the gunk to have as much mechanical connection as possible in its construction. This way I can fully take it apart, work on it, make changes, whatever the case, and then put it all back together. And I'm here to tell you, my friends, I've taken it apart more times than a stormtrooper's missed its target. So the value of assembling a project like this so it can be worked on is worth its weight in Beskar.
Now I know you've seen us use these LCD screens in our HUD display video. <clears throat> Link in the description. But we're also using them here in a very different way. We have a small game console that we're going to install in the gonk. So the display will be used for that purpose. I will say that this display did cause considerable delays in this project, and there had to be a wide range of alterations done to make it work, most considerably on how it mounts to the front of the gonk when we're using it. You'll see here shortly that I install some rare earth magnets, and I'd come up with this crazy concoction to make this work, and it failed. I'll tell you that I solved the problem, but I'm saving that for next time. For now, you'll just have to know that it's wired up, it's secured in place when it's not in use, and we'll get to the rest of it later. I put a couple of minor LEDs since I had the face of the gonk off. There's nothing special here, and in the next gonk episode, we'll show and explore all the different types of electronics we're gonna be putting into this bad boy. I wanted to point out that the exposed wiring I did for the plug, I took some extra steps that were perhaps unnecessary, but it helps me sleep better at night. I put a bit of hot glue on all the terminals and then I wrapped it with electrical tape. Now where the terminal sits is underneath the base plate, so no one's hands should ever be there. And I'm sure that the electrical tape was probably enough, but again, I'm gonna sleep better. Our little gonk has come a long way, and it has a bit longer to go. We've already wired up the gaming system, done some weathering on the inside, and a few more bits. I'm sorry it's been as long as it has since we've done an update for this build. Honestly, it just got away from me. But we're getting close, and soon enough, we'll have the conclusion ready for you. Here in the United States, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And every year, I try to think of the things that I'm thankful for. 2020? Yeah, it's made that a little bit difficult. But for Carissa and I, we're thankful for all of you, that you come here each week and you watch our ridiculous builds and all of that support. So we wish you nothing but the best. We hope you're well and that you're safe. And uh, be kind to one another because kindness, yeah, that's another way of building something out of nothing. <laughs>